my art revolves around love. Love is one of the strongest energy that rules the earth. It's the core of the universe, actually. It's the creator, it's God, it's mysterious. Nobody can really explain what love is. And that's what I create. Duji Sherman's love can be seen all over the pieces he creates. With layers of acrylic and oil paint, his love expresses itself through stories, meticulously painted on canvas. Before a child starts walking, they dance first. You know, before they start to speak, they will sing. I mean, before they start writing words and formulating words and, you know, sentences, they, they will doodle. And I feel like we were born with the arts. The arts is within us. I started creating around the age of four. One of the first people I learned from was my uncle. He was um, an artist in Haiti as well. And he, he's the first person that taught me the different uh, you know, facial structures and how to properly do it. And I started out with, uh, with pencils. And from pencils, I you know, kind of went up the scale to acrylic and you know, markers and oil paint and spray painting and all that stuff. You know. Today, the 20-year-old known as Du is a professional artist living in Montgomery County, Maryland. His works are easily recognizable from the bright colors, the use of symbolism, and his subjects. I'm like a sponge. So what's around me is being absorbed and I release it on canvas. I feel like it was not really a conscious thought to even paint black people. It's what I'm surrounded by. Why not? I mean, Picasso wasn't painting black people. <laughs> I mean, he painted what he, what he was around, you know? That's what he, he was familiar with. Love, sadness, joy, and revenge are some of the stories depicted in colorful paint, a commentary on life. Growing up, the adults in my life didn't tell me all that there was to life, you know? They don't tell you the different things that there is to know about life. They just tell you the beautiful parts of it. And I feel like that's the colors in my pieces. And then you look at the concept, like, oh, this is kind of dark a little bit, you know, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of, ugh. But at the same time, it is still pleasing enough for you. You enjoy both aspects of life, and that's why it makes life interesting. You know, it's not just one-sided or one big joy, a bundle of joy. It's, it's a mixture of all types of things. Your first reaction, you know, when you see my art is, is supposed to be, Hmm, interesting, that's a lot of colors. It, it catches your eye, you know? And then, once it catches your attention, now the concept grabs you and holds you there. So now you're like, oh, I ain't see that before. There's more to it than just the colors. Now you're looking into, now you're looking for more. Like, what else is there? Let me, let me look. Oh, sure, I ain't see that before. You probably leave the room, come back the next day, oh, I ain't see that yesterday. And I'll probably go on for years with each emotion, with each, scenario that you go through in your life, it, it will be different. It will be a different meaning. Becoming a full-time artist has meant sacrifice. It also means relying on others to lend their support and understanding. I have a lot of friends when they talk about their friends, how strict they are about, you know, how they're not doing what they want them to do as far as the parents, you know, yeah, I want you to go to school. You got to do this. You got to study that. You know, especially if they're paying you know, for it. And my mom, she didn't really give me any of that. In fact, I remember being in the seventh grade once, and I told her I, this is what I wanted to do. You know, I, I don't want to go to college. I don't want to study this or that. I want to you know, be an artist after high school. And she understood. And you know, she sat down, she told me you know, the things I would need to prepare myself for and the things that it comes with and how it would be hard to, you know, sustain financially, you know. Had I not had that, I don't know where I would be. That kind of helped me be myself a whole lot, you know. I wasn't forced to be another person, though. I wasn't forced to be a person that I was not. Another important person in Du's support system is his wife, Kwa. <laughs> 
His paintings attracted her before his personality. The first one that I fell in love with, um, when I first saw it, I looked at it for about 40 minutes. And I couldn't help but see myself in it. I couldn't help it. And it created such a strong connection. You ever experienced something where you've been fine without it, but once you've been exposed to it, you cannot live without it. And that's her to me. Similar to a phone. Like you've been well off without a phone. But as soon as you get your first phone, you've never spent a day without it, you know? And that's my wife to me. I feel like I've, I was living and being myself without her. But as soon as she came into my life and added that value, I couldn't myself losing that quality life or I need her by my side, you know? I've had a lot of people, you know, tell me or try to redirect me. So basically, they're putting their own insecurities onto me. You know, they're, the things that they feared themselves, they want me to fear as well. And I thought that, I really thought that was unfair. It was, I wasn't getting a fair shot at what I wanted to do. How they wanted me to do the things that they, they were doing, but it was, I just couldn't see myself doing something I wasn't standing for, you know? When I'm not painting, I'm skating. As I'm writing, I'm listening to music, and I'm going with the wind, going with the flow and being as free as possible. And that way, whenever I get back to the painting, I'm fresh, you know, regenerated. So I'm able to create and add more ideas, and some of the ideas that I add will probably be the things that I was thinking about while I was skating, you know? Like a signature, there are images constantly repeated in Du's pieces that immediately identify his work and the statement being made, clocks, shackles, and an image familiar to all of us. So battery, it's your life force. That's what it represents to me. You know, your, your energy level. And sometimes when you're going through certain things, your energy level is low, but when you're excited or you're just very eager and your energy level is high, and that's when it'll be green, you know, it's, it's your phone. You know, it's when it's red, you know, oh, I need to put some, you know, I plug it up, I need to charge it up. When it's green, you know, I'm good. I, I could last for a while, I could do things that I need to do on my phone. I could enjoy, you know, certain videos and this, you know. But the battery levels or the battery life on top of some of my pieces is to express that, that aspect of it. I really love music, though. Like, I listen to all types of music. Even in my art, you know, it's, it has a lot of music in it. It's like visual sounds. A lot of my characters, what they do is when you have the headphones that's in their ears, if you trace it, it always connects to the heart. It's one of the, you know, organs that's most essential for living. You know, without it, you probably wouldn't be alive. And it makes a particular sound, and we call that heartbeat. It's funny because that's a very musical term, you know, a beat, a heartbeat. I'm surrounded by music. Like music is life. The reason I have shackles with my pieces is not because they are enslaved by anybody else. In fact, I believe we are all enslaved. And we are enslaved by ourselves, and that's like the worst masters yet, you know? For we are enslaved to our desires, our, our lust. We are enslaved to our greed, to the things that we, that we want, you know? Whatever the case may be, we all have something that we're enslaved by. And I believe that the masters are, it's ourselves. And we keep ourselves enslaved. And then we call that control. Obama is a very 
It's, it's, he's a great representation, you know. It was just some small things, you know, some small uh, observations that I made. I was looking at, you know, Washington DC, you know, and I seen the monument and it just resembles the pyramids as well. And it's like the same people that created that, created this today. And I was looking at Obama like, yo, he's like a reincarnated Pharaoh in a way, you know? And I felt like he needed to be painted so people can see, you know, because a lot of time when people paint, especially when I go to, you know, uh, museums, it's usually the, the people of color are not like, you know, what you would like, you know? It's either all oh, scrubbing the floor, or shackles, or jumpsuits, this, that, and the other. I just thought, you know, let me, let me change the narrative for a change. We are creating history right now. So this is me creating history, right? This is me saying, I. Right, for the next generation to come, when they're going to a museum, this is what they're gonna see. This is what I want them to see. And when they see them, this is the light they're supposed to see them in. Now I mean, not like, or handcuffs all the time, or, you know, Nah, are you gonna see yourself as a king, as a god, as a creator? That's what you are. I wanna make the comfortable uncomfortable and make the uncomfortable comfortable with my art. I feel like when you go into different galleries, the art is very beautiful, it's magnificent, but I don't get anything from it. I walk in and walk out, I feel the same way I felt before I walked in. Impact. Like you were here. You know, I feel like that's the biggest art goal you can ever have as an artist. I used to teach art to like third and fifth graders. And there was this one fifth grader that told me that, Mr. Du, did you know that she couldn't spell earth without putting art in it? And I, without, Art, it's just, eh, literally, you know? I just thought about that, and it just put things in perspective. It's like, wow, art is literally within everything. You have, you know, you have uh, martial arts, you have culinary arts, you have visual arts, sound art, and the list goes on and on, you know? Doing art and painting and creating, it's my whole reason for being here. So me giving that up is me giving up breathing, you know? It's me ceasing to exist.